Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to Cyberlink webinar again. I'm Stephen. I'll be the instructor today for the one hour course. So today our topic will be talking about the new product 14. So we have a lot of uh, exciting features to share with you. And we hope you can enjoy uh, watching our webinar today. OK, so uh, you are using YouTube to watch the webinar right now. So before we start, I want to give you a quick reminder that you can see uh, at the left, uh, at the right side, there's a chat window. So uh, if you're having any questions you want to ask, we are having our staff to uh, stay online to answer your questions, whether it's purchasing issues or technical issues or any questions about the demos. You can find um, our people supporting there. And the other thing we want to remind that um, if you think uh, the video quality isn't so good, you can uh, switch it to 720p HD so that you can get a better streaming quality at your site. And if you're facing any uh, freezing or uh, visual freezing or uh, audio freezing issue, you can try uh, refreshing your page. This most time will, will be helping. All right, and again, I'm Stephen. Uh, I'll be leading you through today's one hour section. And I apologize first, I'm sounding a little bit bad because I'm having a, a fever today and I'm having a sore throat. So uh, in case I'm not sounding that well, please apologize me first. Okay, let's start today's course. So first thing uh, we want to share with you is uh, the changes for the past decades. So uh, the first version of Power Director was introduced to the market in 2001, which is uh, 14 years ago. And until now, it's the 40th version, uh, the 14th version of uh, Power Director. And what's the, uh, what the video making world was like 14 years ago? So 14 years ago, it's around year 2000 that uh, we can see uh, the digital camcorder uh, become more affordable. So uh, Sony introduced the very, very first digital camcorder at around 1995, but the price become more affordable around year 2000. So people are uh, able to buy a digital camcorder under 2000 US dollars that most of the family are affordable to buy one to uh, record the daily life of their uh, of their selves. And in uh, 2005 to 2007, that there are some changes in the video capture device, that the digital cameras and DSLRs, which were only taking photos, are able to take videos as well. So like uh, in year 2007, we see Canon introduced to the market uh, the 5D Mark II, which is the first DSLR being able to capture video. And until now, there are still a lot of uh, commercial video producers are using 5D Mark II to record the videos. And in year 2007, there's another device change the world, which is the introduction of first version of iPhone. So we can see more and more smartphone come into our market in later years, whether it's iOS device or Android device or Windows phone devices. And now they have one thing in common that all of the devices are capable to record video and around all of them are able to capture a 1080p quality video. And even some of the latest model like the new iPhone 6S, uh, is able to capture video up to 4K quality. So it's pretty amazing that before you need to get, uh, take a, a digital camcorder, the kind of huge device to record video. And now you can record video with a pocketable device like your phone. And yet again, in 2010, we see another type of uh, video capturing device were introduced to the market, which is GoPro action camera. So GoPro introduced their first uh, hero camera in year 2010, and which was a blast in the market. So after that, we can see a lot of other uh, camera makers like Sony or JVC or Panasonic, they are start to producing um, their uh, action camera. So now that when you are talking about action camera, that everyone, the first thing they'll think about uh, is GoPro. Okay, and the other type of device we see in the market is drones. So uh, drones like DJI, that a, a vendor from China, they're producing pretty high quality drones so that you can not only uh, taking the video on the ground, you can 
also uh, shooting the video from up in the air. So we can see uh, the video caption devices change uh, throughout the past 15 years and the size become more comfortable, uh, compact and the price are more affordable and the resolution are getting higher that before it's only able to capture 480p video then change to HD 720p, 1080p, and now that some uh, of the devices are able to capture 4K already. And the other important thing is that um, <clears throat> it's, it's easier to carry, it's easier to uh, do the outdoor use, and especially for cameras like um, uh, GoPro, it's got a water resistance case so that you can even take it underwater. So you can see uh, the topic of video creation has been changed throughout the years as well. So before we were mainly recording uh, our home video, like uh, the grow up of a baby or a wedding video. And when the device become more compact that people are happy to bring the video capturing device and take videos during the trip. So we can see a lot of travel videos were made. And when they introduce, after the introduction of GoPro, we can see uh, GoPro actually brings a new, whole new horizon to the video creator's world. That Asian sport has become a growing uh, topic in video creation. So whether you go water diving, you go mountain climbing or surfing or do uh, mountain biking or even doing skydiving, all kind of activities you can bring a GoPro-like device with you to capture those amazing footage. However, um, there are still some disadvantage of the Asian cameras that, for example, uh, the first thing is that most of this video were taken uh, under extreme er environment so that uh, most of the footage you get are pretty shaky. And the second thing is a fisheye distortion. So devices like GoPro, they are having an ultra wide lens because they don't have a LCD monitor. Most of the model don't have a LCD monitor. So you cannot see what you have captures. So, have, so, so uh, GoPro gives you an ultra wide lens to allow you like a blind shooting that whatever you, you do, as long as you're pointing to the device you want to shoot, you can capture it. However, this kind of, this kind of uh, ultra wide lens uh, always comes with a strong fisheye distortion. So uh, this, uh, fisheye distortion, if it's one shot or two shot, it's okay for people. However, if it's a one hour long video, then you feel dizzy watching that kind of video. And the third thing uh, we see from action camera footage is the color problem. So most of uh, the action sport camera are shooting um, in auto mode, which means under some uh, extreme environment, like um, for example, in a snow ground, that when everything's white, then the auto color uh, detection of your camera will think uh, it's too bright. So uh, it will give you uh, under exposure footage. And we see a lot of this case uh, of uh, incorrect problem uh, from incorrect color problem from the action camera footage. So that's one thing uh, we see commonly. And the fourth thing and the fifth thing are um, most of people are not familiar with uh, video editing software. So it's very hard to use it and the, the effect created isn't that cool enough. So that's what we want to change and enhance to help people in the new version of our product 14, including uh, stabilize your action sport footage and doing a one-click lens correction for uh, those ultra-wide lens uh, footage and doing the color correction for those uh, video with uh, incorrect colors. And we want to make the uh, editing more easy, uh, make the editing easier and helping people to create uh, the video uh, with cooler effects. So that's what we want to do in Power Director 14 that uh, we are introducing three new features. One is Action Camera Center, which group whatever you need for action camera footage in one place. And the second one is motion tracker, which allows you to uh, track a uh, moving object in your footage and overlay um, PIP or text following the movement path of uh, the moving object in your video. And the third one is Express Project, which is a new time, uh, timeline-based template tool that you can easily create uh, professional uh, videos. Okay, so let's start uh, with the introduction of each uh, features. So first, we're talking about the Action Camera Center. So the new Action Camera Center in Power Director 14 
actually uh, does two things. The first thing is that we mentioned before that uh, most of the action sport footage are uh, with some um, fault, like uh, it's shaky and the color is not correct and it's got a uh, fisheye distortion. So we want to help people to fix it and enhance it. And the second one is the uh, effect, especially the speed effect. So we see um, <clears throat> Usually, if you are taking a 10 minutes long action camera footage, there may be only like 30 seconds are the best part. And we want to make a slow motion for some good part, and we want to make some uh, fast forward for some uh, not so good part, but we, we use them as a bridging shot. And for some shot, we think it's really impressive. We want to have a, a freeze frame and zoom into it. So in the past, it's pretty hard to do this with a power director or other editing software. So we want to enhance the workflow to make it uh, easier to do this kind of uh, speed adjustment in Power Director 14. So next, we will quickly show you what the uh, enhancement thing uh, Power Director 14's Action Camera Center can do. Okay, so the first one is lens correction. So you can see the left side, uh, the video footage, the side is pretty uh, distorted uh, and strong fisheye effect. While the right side, we're correcting the fisheye effect. <clears throat> okay, and the second thing is the video stabilizer. So actually, we are having the stabilizer before in Power Director already. And this time, we want to make it more accessible if people want to edit the action camera footage. So you can see the right side footage is pretty stabilized. And the third thing we're talking about is white balance correction. So under some environment, like in the restroom, usually the color temperature will be too warm. So uh, the video turns out to be yellow. So we need to correct this kind of problem. And then uh, it's a color preset. The first one is countryside. So some of the footage uh, taken in sunny day, the saturation is not too high. So we want to enhance uh, the color saturation to enhance the blue and green part. And in the snow field, you can see, because uh, everything is white, so mostly uh, your camera will have an uh, underexposure shot. So we want to correct this kind of problem. And the last one is the underwater color preset, that uh, underwater, the color temperature is too, uh, too cold. So uh, we want to correct that to make things not looking so blue all the time. All right, so that's what the Action Camera Center's uh, fix and enhancement can do. So now uh, let's go to Power Director's main interface. And before we start, because uh, some of you are first time using Power Director, so I'll give you a, a quick walkthrough of what the UI is like. So the first part uh, you see at the right side, this is the media room where you put all your video photos and uh, music content at. You can drag and drop and import the resources you want. And you can also find a different tab to switch whether you want a video effect, particles, or PIP, or titles, or transitions in the left side to switch between panels. And the right side is a preview window, which can show you the real-time result when you're producing and editing a video. OK. And the bottom side you can see here is a timeline interface of PowerDirector where it's like a working desktop of your video editing software. So you can uh, overlay all kinds of different elements, adjusting the size and overlaying the music following this uh, timeline interface. OK, and if you've got uh, further problems or questions using a uh, timeline interface, you can go to our learning centers to find uh, more tutorials. All right, so let's start with uh, using the Action Camera Center. So there are two different ways to launch Action Camera Center. The first way is select a, a media room item, then click on this uh, GSO bustle, um, uh, uh, this uh, plugin icon, then you can see an action camera center menu shows up where you can enter it. Well, the other way is that if you already got this item on your timeline, you can select it and go to tools and select the action camera center here. Then you will be bringing to Action Camera Center's interface. OK, so we can see uh, at the top there are two different uh, menus. The first one is Fix. So the Fix module in 
includes lens correction, video stabilizer, white balance, and color preset, which are commonly uh, problems for Asian Camera Center with what you want to fix. So first, let's take a look at the lens correction part. So you can see in this uh, GoPro footage that uh, the edges of the video are with a very strong fisheye distortion. So how to enhance that? You can take on the lens correction where you can select the maker of your camera and the model. So for example, if the model is GoPro Hero 3, you can select them all, then you are done. So this is the correct result. I'll give you a quick comparison. This is before and this is after. So you can see uh, the fisheye distortion problem is uh, resolved with one click. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. And if you want to download more lens profile preset, you can go to directorzone.com by clicking this download button to get more lens profile preset from directorzone. And we are now having more than 10 camera makers and more than 20 models available uh, built in inside of uh, PowerDirector. And we'll be publishing the new uh, lens profile presets in Director Zone in the future. And also we'll include these new presets uh, in uh, future patches of PowerDirector. Okay, and the second thing uh, the Action Camera Center can do is to stabilize video. So it's pretty simple that you can tick on the video stabilizer and you can select the strengths of uh, your stabilizer and you can choose to fix a rotation type of uh, camera shake, which when your um, hands is shaking in circle. And also we have another stabilizer, it's an enhanced stabilizer that also help you to enhance the multi axis like uh, like a front to back and left to right, top to down, all type of uh, stabilization. So you can choose the stabilization here by enable the video stabilizer module. Okay, and the second thing we want to show is uh, how to do the color balance, uh, the, the white color balance, sorry, the white balance thing. <clears throat> okay, so you can find uh, the third menu is about white balance where you can uh, manually change your color temperature and tint, or you can use the white collaboration that you can select any part on your video where uh, it was supposed to be white. Like this part, it's, it's, uh, looks pink and in skin color in, in, in the original video. So you can select it and make it white. So you can see right away that the right side of the video is corrected, where you can get an instant uh, white balance correction with uh, this white balance tool. So this is uh, before yellow and after it's white. All right, then the next thing we're going to show you is using of a color preset. So uh, we are grouping uh, some of the commonly used, frequently used uh, sports preset in this color preset panel. And here we're having a countryside preset that you can and select it, click on it. So you can see right away uh, the sky has become more blue and the trees have become more green, right? enhancing the, um, <clears throat> the color saturation of uh, this video. Because usually if you're taking the video under sunny day, that it will more or less uh, over exposure, over exposure. So uh, the video will be looking pretty pale. So you can use this kind of a preset to change it, to enhance it. So I show you this is uh, before and after. Okay. And the next footage we'll show you is in the snow field. So you can see like this video here, uh, it's taken in snow field that um, it's not looking that good because uh, the, the lighting condition isn't good that is it's looking too dark because it's under exposure. So you can select the color preset and click on snow field. So you can see we instantly um, enhance that. So you get a better quality footage uh, with this um, snow field color preset. Okay, and the last one is underwater. So you can see uh, the original footage here because underwater, everything seems so blue. So you can see uh, the back of the sea turtle is supposed to be brown, but it's looking like a not so good color right now. So you can select the color preset and apply the underwater preset to it. So you can see um, the 
uh, the brown part is uh, standing out right now. And at the same time, we are enhancing the, <coughs> the underwater color, the, the green and the blue part are being enhanced uh, together with this preset. So it's very easy and very fast. If you want to quickly enhance this footage, you can choose from the sports preset. And also you can access to all the, all the other default preset uh, in the default preset panel to apply different preset to your video. Or you can go to um, color director. If you have color director in your PC, you can uh, further edit that, uh, adjust it in detail with color director. Or if you want to download more preset, you can also go to download the preset that uh, you downloaded from um, Director Zone. So that's the demonstration of uh, Action Camera Center's uh, fixed and enhanced module. Then the next thing we want to show you is uh, speed effect, how to do a speed effect with uh, Power Director 14. So let's take a look at the demo video. So see the original video taking in regular speed? It's good, but uh, it's lack of highlight. I want to highlight some part with slow motion, or I want to highlight some action uh, with repeat, or I want to zoom in somehow. So you can use uh, Action Camera Center to do this kind of fast forward, slow motion, and repeat plus slow motion. <clears throat> And also like uh, this kind of uh, freeze frame plus zooming. <clears throat> okay, so how to do this with uh, Power Director? Let me show you. <coughs> okay, if you're using a uh, older version of uh, Power Director, uh, the thing you need to do to create that kind of footage is that you actually need to uh, split your original footage in many, many different uh, fragments like this. So some of them are with uh, faster, some of them are with uh, slower, slow motion. And for that kind of uh, repeat effect, you need to uh, split one section, copy and paste, copy and paste, and copy and paste plus applying speed effect. And if you want to have uh, this kind of uh, zooming effect that you need to uh, capture a frame and use a PIP designer to control the zoom in, zoom out of that. So even if you are pretty skillful, you probably need to take uh, 20 to 30 minutes to adjust this single footage, which is uh, quite time consuming. So we'll show you how to do this uh, speed effect with uh, Power Director's Action Camera Center. Okay, so upon launch, launching the <clears throat> Asian Camera Center, you can see the second tab is called Effect. Okay, where you can find replay and speed or uh, freeze frame under this uh, main menu. Okay, so first I want to show you uh, two different timeline uh, keyframe attributions of uh, Asian Camera Center. The first one is a uh, time shift. So Time shift means a um, specific duration of time where you want to adjust the speed effect over it. So whether you can uh, make it faster or make it slower, or I want to do repeat re uh, or, or reverse effect in that time duration. And the second uh, keyframe attribution is uh, freeze frame. So freeze frame is means it's a frame, uh, it's a single frame in your video and you want to freeze it and doing some zoom in or zoom out effect with that. So that's a freeze frame. So let me quickly show you the first one. If I want to create a time shift and, and change the video speed, you can click on create time shift and drag it uh, to the duration you want. Then if, for example, I want to make it faster, I can uh, click on the speed effect and make it 10 times faster. <clears throat> Okay, and for this uh, leaping part, I want to create another time shift. I want the super slow motion to the video. So I can apply the speed effect and make it uh, slower, 25%. <clears throat> and for this part, when uh, the guy is doing a bridging, I can add another time shift 
and I can uh, apply replay for two times here and uh, make make the third time having a slow motion. So it's like this that replay for two times and the slow motion for the third time at one four speed. Then lastly, uh, when he's uh, leaping here, I want to create a freeze frame. I can add a freeze frame. Then I want it to zoom in to a specific part. So I can click on uh, apply zoom effect. Then I can drag uh, this preview window to the part I want. I can resize it even like this. <clears throat> OK, so that's done already. So let's take a look at the final produced result. So here's a fast forward plus slow motion. And repeat once, twice, slow motion. Then zooming. So you can see it's done already. I only take like one minute uh, to finish all this text that uh, it usually took me like 20 or 30 minutes before when I'm using uh, Power Director older version. So it's actually very easy and simple to do this kind of uh, speed adjustment effect. So, <coughs> excuse me. So it's not only applying to your action camera footage uh, of action sport. You can also use this kind of technique uh, in your travel videos. Okay, so that's the demo for the first one, the <coughs> action camera center's uh, speed effect. Then the second one we want to show, the second demo we want to show is a motion tracker. <coughs> so motion tracker in Powder to 14 is to track a uh, moving object. For example, a people or a vehicle in your video. And we can uh, use a motion tracker to track uh, its motion path. Then overlay a uh, object, whether it's video or a PIP image or a text or even spill, uh, or, or even video effect following the movement of the moving object in your video. So here we'll quickly show you how uh, the result will be looking like. So you can see uh, the original video don't have any effects and um, adding a motion checker and to, M, uh, to add a M graphic and the name tag uh, following the movement of the skateboarder. So let's see how to do this. So to use a motion checker in Power Director, <coughs> I see some of you are asking a question previously on the chat room. So you can select the clip and go to tools where you can find the motion tracker menu shows up here. Click it to enter the motion tracker interface. So upon launching, you will see uh, this check window <clears throat> where you can um, resize it to the portion you want on your video. Then click on check. <clears throat> then we will start to following the movement of the people in this video. Okay, when the tracking is done, you can do one thing, is that uh, adding an effect following it. So for example, I want to add the highlight effect. I want to add a spotlight effect above the skateboarder. <clears throat> I can add it like this. It can be a spotlight or a mosaic either way. You can also change the color of the spotlight like this. Okay, and the good thing about the motion tracker is that you can actually apply several motion trackings uh, in one video footage. So you can copy a tracker by right clicking on the, the, the first tracker. And for example, I want to add a graphic. I can import a graphic here. 
resize it following the movement. <clears throat> and again, I can copy it again or to <clears throat> add another item, which is a name tag. Okay, and the uh, last one, I want to add his name. So I can copy again, add the text. And change the color of the text, like this, and resize it. So that's done, so let's see uh, how the end result looks alike. <clears throat> Okay, pretty cool. So you can even uh, rename um, each track. For example, I want this to be Spotlight. I want this to be... Um, okay, and when everything is done, you can bring it back to Timeline, <clears throat> where you can see... Um, each different object will be added to timeline. <clears throat> Either it's a PIP image or name. So that's pretty easy to do uh, the motion tracking uh, with a new Power Director 14. So that's the demonstration of a motion tracker. Then next, we're going to show you um, <clears throat> a new template-based tool in um, Power Director 14. So you might ask that we already have a lot of uh, template-based tool in previous version of Power Director 14. Why we need to introduce a new one? Because we already have uh, something like a slideshow creator where you can uh, put together all your photos and merge them to slideshows with your own music. And we have a Magic Movie Wizard where you can also still use your photo, but the themes are better looking. They are 3D animated themes. And in Powder to 12, we introduced the first version of uh, Film Designer, where uh, you can use a mixture of uh, videos and photo um, in your project. And you can have uh, more customization, like the text. And you can create uh, the 3D animated uh, type of video from uh, many different themes. Then why we need a new theme-based, template-based tool? Uh, because uh, above three tools, they are not uh, fully utilized the timeline interface. So when you're using this uh, designer tool, the things you get will be your timeline object, but you cannot do any uh, detailed things like uh, applying a transition between clips or uh, overlaying a single text on a, a, a single shot, a specific shot, et cetera. So it's not that easy to use. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I mean, it's not not that uh, fully utilize the timeline-based interface. So that's why we we're being asked by the users and we uh, created a new uh, feature called uh, the Express Project, which is a template-based um, tool. However, it's using the timeline interface of uh, Power Director. So using the Express Project is simple, that there are only three steps. The first step is uh, choose a uh, 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 template. So we are categorizing this template by theme and by segment. So the theme can be uh, travel, can be adventure, can be sports, or can be romance, etc. And the segments, we have uh, opening, we have a middle part, and we have ending. So you can uh, freely mixture different segments from different theme packs and compose them uh, to uh, just uh, by dragging and drop them, uh, these template segments to your timeline. <clears throat> then after adding it to your timeline, you can uh, quickly replace uh, your media with the pre-configured uh, media items on the Express project. So I'll quickly show you what the final result will look like from Express project. So you can see uh, we got a pretty nice looking opening and some customized text with uh, some blur effect and slow-mo effects and this kind of a split screen and more fancy uh, PIP objects and some particle effects. 
Okay, so uh, in the past, if you want to create this kind of uh, effect with product, it probably will take a pretty long time for you to create everything from scratch. So uh, that's how why we are introducing the <clears throat> the Express project. So to access to Express project is pretty easy. You can go to your media content where you can see uh, Express project is showing up here. Okay, and select it. You'll see a lot of uh, templates are showing here. So there are some things like uh, adventure, like uh, anniversary. It's a romance uh, template, or like love, or extreme sports, action, etc. So to use it, <clears throat> uh, you simply need to drag and drop it uh, to your timeline. So for example, I want the opening, like this one. Okay, so I can put it to timeline. And I want to add another uh, middle part and ending part of the videos. I can add the middle here. And I can drag and drop a nice ending to uh, the project as well. All right, so now you can see uh, the object will be drag and dropped to the template. And there are a lot of numbers showing up on your timeline. <clears throat> So the next thing you do is go back to your media content and drag and drop. To replace the item on your timeline. Okay. Then you can see uh, <clears throat> the timeline object will be replaced. So let's see how it look like. You can see here's the opening and some instant cuts and some PIP plus effects transitions and more transitions and some text and uh, particle effects. Okay, so it's pretty easy to use the Express project. So you can see everything is uh, presented as a timeline object on the video. So if you want to replace it, drag and drop to replace it again. Place this media content. And if you want to customize a uh, text of a single shot, you can double click the text to edit it. And also you can enter the particle room if it's a particle you want to edit it. So it won't take you too long time to select these shots, select these uh, templates, then <laughs> and just uh, select them, insert to timeline, and replace it. Then you can is, uh, export a pretty nicely looking video in pretty short time. So that's a beauty about the Express project. So uh, we got already more than around 20 uh, segments of Express project uh, built into Power Director 14. And in the future, we'll be releasing the new templates on Director Zone. So you can also go back to directorzone.com to check uh, some new templates. All right. Then, um, let me close this. Okay. And the next thing uh, we'll show you is multi cam. I know it's not a new feature here because we are having a multi-cam editing two version ago, but there are still a lot of you are asking us how to use the multi-cam editing, how to use it, how to use it. So we will uh, have a section talking about multi-cam. And multi-cam also is a very good way to edit uh, the action camera or sports footage. So now that in Power Director, we have two different type of multi-cam editing tool. The first one is called multi-cam designer which allows you to um, doing this live uh, simulation for the shot from four cameras. So there will be, if you're having four stream, you can only having uh, one stream at one time in single, uh, in, single uh, in, 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 in a specific duration. So it's like when you're seeing uh, TV broadcasting, you're switching between uh, camera one to four, you're switching between them. So that's the multi-cam designer. And the second thing is that if you want to create a multi-cam collage or multi-cam TV wall, then you will need the, the multi-cam audio sync uh, feature. So it's basing on <coughs> Power Director's timeline interface. So we are having, we're supporting uh, up to 100 tracks of, of timeline. So the multi-cam audio sync 
allows you to sync up the audio from uh, 100 tracks. So you can uh, sync the footage, then uh, use a PIP tool to adjust the size to create a multicam TV wall. So let me show you how to use this. <clears throat> okay, so here I'm having some footage or footage record from different angles. So to launch the Multicam uh, Designer Room, you can click on the plugin icon, then select Multicam Designer, where you can enter the Multicam interface. Okay, so now you'll see uh, the four streams are represented in four different windows. So the first thing we want to do is do audio sync because all these footage are not uh, recorded starting at the same time. So you can select uh, audio analysis and click on apply. <clears throat> okay, so you see uh, now the the, the, the footage will be uh, realigned based on uh, their audio tracks. So next, we will show you how to record uh, this footage. <clears throat> so to start recording a multi-cam footage, you need to click the record button. You can see it's starting to recording. Then you can use the number key on, um, on your PC to switch between different shots by pressing two, three, and four, and one, and three, and two. <clears throat> okay, for example, like this, now I can click stop. <clears throat> click the record button again to stop it. So let's see how it will be looking like. You see, we are pretty easy to switch in between uh, these different shots. Okay, and you can also uh, readjust the size, the duration of each footage, like by dragging and drop here. It's pretty similar to the timeline attribution in Power Director. And you can uh, select on one clip to change it to other cameras like this. So once it's done, you can click OK. <clears throat> then you will bring back um, this kind of uh, multi-cam object on your timeline. <clears throat> okay, so this is the first way to use the multi-cam editing tool. Then the second thing we're showing you is how to use the timeline's audio thing. So drag and drop your footage to the timeline. Okay, now I'm having four clips. Select them all and you will see a sync by audio button showing up here. <clears throat> Click on it for doing the audio analysis. And by the way, the PC I'm demoing right now is using an Intel Ultrabook. So it's actually not that super fast, super fast PC. You can see the performance of Powder is already good. So now you see uh, the footage are being synchronized based on the audio tracks. All right, so now that uh, if you want to create a multi-cam TV wall, then I can uh, go to each frame and resize it. <clears throat> then here you go, uh, multi-cam TV wall collage. And if you want more precise editing, like as adjusting the movement of uh, each frame during movement, you can uh, go using the PIP designer tool. And it's a bit complicated, so I will, will not cover in today's demonstration. So that's, these are the two ways to use uh, multi-cam editing in Power Director 15, uh, sorry, in Power Director 14. So the first one is multi-cam designer, and the second one is 100 track audio sync on timeline. <clears throat> All right, and the next thing is a new feature we want to show you is the screen recorder of PowerDirector. So uh, we finally get this uh, widget in PowerDirector, which allows you to record uh, full screen, 
or record a specific app, record a specific area on your PC, and you can assign uh, the aspect ratio of your exported PC, uh, exported video. And also you can track the mouse clicks by, uh, by adding the mouse click icons. Um, clicking the mouse click icon, and you can assign a different color to it. Then you can record. Okay, so I'll show you how to launch uh, the, the uh, screen recorder. So the first thing, the first way is to go to all uh, installed apps. Then you will find an app called Cyberlink Screen Recorder. It's been installed alongside with Power Director 14, where you can launch it. And the second way to launch a screen recorder is that you can launch it right inside of a Power Director. You can find it uh, under the capture module. Then you will see here is a screen recording icon. Click it, you launch this uh, screen recorder interface. Then you can use it to record. And I'm not going to uh, go through very detail about the recording process. You can go to our learning center to find a screen recorder tutorial of how to use it. And one of the good thing about uh, launching the screen recorder inside uh, of the Power Director is that after recording the video, uh, if you close it, you can you can click the edit side, then you can send the recorded footage right back to Power Director's timeline where if you want to add more things like a, a PIP text or a more um, PIP control, the, PIP, the, 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 the size control, et cetera. So that's pretty easy and pretty simple way to record uh, your video in full screen. <clears throat> All right, then next we'll show you um, the speed of uh, Power Director. So uh, it's still now rated as the fastest uh, consumer video editing software in the market compared to all the other competitors. And this version, we enhance the True Velocity 5 rendering engine. And again, it's 64-bit uh, OpenCL and multi-GPU GPU support. And we enhance a lot on the H.265 encoding and decoding. And also, we are enhancing, again, the SVRT2 version 4, which uh, also supports MPEG-4 video and, and, and the H.265 video encoding. So uh, that's the speed part of uh, Power Director. And for the hardware acceleration, uh, still we are supporting like the district card from AMD and, 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 and NVIDIA, and also supporting uh, the latest version of uh, Intel's uh, HD graphic and Intel's Core i CPU. So like the demo device I'm using today is uh, running a fifth generation of uh, Core i ultra low voltage uh, i5 CPU. So you can see uh, the demo is somehow pretty smooth. Like some of you are mentioning the audio sync uh, is pretty fast. <clears throat> okay, and talking about the, <clears throat> the format and codec. So again, Powder to 14 supports the latest format like uh, 4K Ultra HD, H.265, uh, H.265, AVC HD 2.0, XAVCS, this newer standard. And uh, in this version, we enhance a lot for the high frame rate video support. So we are enhancing the encoding and decoding quality of 120 and 240 frames videos in MPEG-4 format. So before, if you're using other software or using older version of Power Director, and when you are attempting to import like uh, 120 F frames uh, video taking from your iPhone, then the preview quality won't be so good. But this version, we enhance uh, the, the preview quality a lot. And also, we are not only allow you to import, we also allow you to export the video at uh, 120 and 240 frames. Okay, so that's an enhancement on the <clears throat> format and codec. Then next, we were sh talking about uh, the companion company uh, uh, software and Power Director family. So we are having Power Director uh, as a main video editor, and we are having another software called Audio Director, which is an uh, audio editing tool that you can do a few things like uh, uh, eliminate the noise uh, inside of your video, or uh, to apply some sound effect, or adding, um, <clears throat> or, or doing the multi-track uh, audio mixing, like the live band recording, you can use Audio Director. And Color Director is a color uh, grading, color correction tool 
that you can uh, use it to uh, adjust the color in your video. So we see the uh, color preset demo before. So uh, it's basically made by a color director. So you can, if you have a color director, you can also uh, have further adjustment, like uh, uh, doing detailed adjustment on saturation, uh, replace single color, or using a motion tracker uh, to track a specific area of your video, then change a color, like a change a, a white t-shirt to blue t-shirt, or like, <coughs> or, or even you can apply things like a gradient mask to, to heal certain part of your video by gradient mask. That's color director. And photo director, I think most of you already know it. It's a photo editing software. And in this new version of photo director seven, we are supporting uh, layer, but due to the time limitation, we're not talking too much about the layer today. And also like uh, when integrating with uh, video editing workflow, uh, you can do things like uh, if you're having a photo in your video project and you want to remove a background, then you can uh, pass it to photo director, then using the background removal tool to remove it, then send back to power director as a transparent background PNG file that you can use it as a PIP object in your video. So uh, talking about round trip editing, what is it? Uh, so it's a capability to transfer the working files between power director and other three apps. So for example, there's one clip I'm editing with bad audio, so I can send on that audio, uh, that video clip right to audio director to do audio editing, then send it back to power director. And if I got the color problem of a specific big uh, clip, I can pass it to color director, do the adjustment, and send it back to power director. And same thing for the photo. And the good thing is that <clears throat> during this process, I don't need to do any rendering. For example, the color graded uh, video, you don't need to render in color director. You can pass it right back to power director then render everything together when you are producing the video in final steps. So you can see it, um, it's uh, removing the redundant workload by rendering the video for two times uh, into one single workflow. So it's pretty effective that if you are a user of Director Suite or uh, PowerDirector Ultimate Suite. Okay, so here's one interesting new feature we want to show you in Audio Director 6 which is the automatic dialogue alignment feature. So picture this, that uh, you are going out for outdoor shot, but there are some uh, kids screaming, there are some wind sound, that you are not happy with the sound you, you recorded when you are having a shot outdoor. So when, when you go back home, you want to doing the redub. You can re-record a clean voice. However, because uh, some of you are not a professional redubber, so you, you probably cannot match, uh, cannot match the tempo or the pitch that perfectly. So <clears throat> in this case, uh, we need some tools to help uh, realign and synchronize the newly recorded audio track to mapping it to the original video. So that's what the audio director's uh, uh, automatic dialogue alignment is doing. It's matching the sound pattern of the original video and the newly recorded audio, and then uh, stretch and adjust the tempo of the, the audio track to let it match the audio original uh, videos, uh, original videos soundtrack. <clears throat> All right, then let me show you how this is done, how to use this. Okay, launching audio director. So you can see here I already having uh, two clips being uh, imported to audio director. So let's see the original <clears throat> the original um, video I recorded. Now we're going to give a brief demonstration of the automated dialogue alignment features in Audio Director 6. Automated dialogue alignment is perfect for redubbing a voice track when the original video was shot in a noisy environment, such as this one. Okay, so we record this video in Cybernetics Lobby during lunchtime. So a lot of people are walking by. It's not sound that good, a lot of noise. So uh, we come back to the studio and we record a new track. Sound like this. Now, we're going to give a brief demonstration of the automated dialogue alignment features in Audio Director 6. 
automated dialogue alignment is perfect for redubbing a voice track when the original video was shot in a noisy environment, such as this one. OK, so you can hear uh, the newly recorded track is cleaner. However, the pen tempo doesn't match. So if you mix them together. Well, it's a mess. Then now the thing I want to do is that I want to uh, use this newly record track to replace the audio track in the first one. So I can select these two tracks. You can see originally the web phone is uh, different. You can select them, uh, select them two, then click on this uh, audio alignment button. So I can choose the base clip is the MPEG-4 video I had. And the target clip is a redub clean, um, clean voice. I want it to doing the alignment. Click on apply. So you see the waveform is now mapping with the above one. OK. So now let's uh, hear what's the final result. Okay, it's pretty easy, right? So you can see uh, the waveform of the second clip. The newly redubbed clip is now uh, rematching to the waveform of the original one. That uh, the newly audio, we stretch it a bit. And when, when we stretch it, sometimes the tempo is faster. I make, need to make it slower. And when it's slower, the sound will sound deeper. The pitch will be lower. So in the same time, audio director is adjusting the pitch of the newly uh, the, the adjusted soundtrack to make the pitch a little bit higher to match the original tone of the video. So actually, audio director is quite busy doing a lot of uh, different things to have uh, the newly recorded uh, audio track mapping the lip movement of the video track. So this is useful when you uh, for for to to resolving some noisy problem when you for your auto shot that you can always come back to your studio and re-record a cleaner voice with um, a better microphone. All right, so this is the audio director's demo. Then next we'll show you uh, the power director Android. So some of you, if you're using Power Director for years, that we, you probably have used the bundle version of Power Director. And in this version, we change it a lot. The first thing uh, is become a free software. So we no longer bundle it with Power Director. So you can get it now for free on Android App Store. And we do not have iOS version for now and not planning to do it in the short time anyway. OK, so you can find the Power Director Android app on Android App Store. And Power Director Android is a timeline-based uh, video editing software that you can drag and drop your, audio, uh, your video clips on your timeline. And we are having uh, a lot of uh, building video effects and the titles and a lot of nice tools like a speed adjustment tool or rotation tool or, or flip tool. And after creating, you can uh, upload the produced video right away to YouTube or Facebook to share with your friend. Or uh, the other way is that you can upload the project to your Cyberlink Cloud. Then you can come back home to edit uh, the video project again with your Power Director on PC. So I'll give you a quick demo of uh, Power Director Android app. OK, upon launching Power Director's Android's in main interface, you can see uh, here's a gallery. So if you already have a lot of uh, different projects, you'll be showing up here. And if not, you can click on this icon or click on uh, creating a new project by click uh, by to, to create a new project uh, in Power Director Android. <clears throat> so where you can see uh, the videos in your camera row will be showing in one tab, and the photos in your camera row will show in the second one. And the third tab will be um, the music on your phone will be showing here. So to use a timeline, uh, to add an object to timeline is easy. You can go to your camera roll to choose a clip, select it, then click the plus sign, then you'll be added to timeline. So the same way you can uh, add more and more clips onto the timeline. You can drag it around to see the different part of your video. 
Okay, and also you can add titles to your video, like uh, go to titles room, then select the title, add it to timeline. Then you can click on it, click the edit sign to, to edit the text. For example, I want to type, um, it's she men in Taipei. Okay, this is one um, very famous um, area in Taipei for sightseeing and a lot of tourists love to come. So I can drag and drop to resize the text uh, and the position and then click edit if I want to change the font face. And I can also change the color of the text. <clears throat> so let's see how it looks like. Okay, that's cool. <clears throat> then if you want to make the clip shorter, you can click on it and check the two sides, just like what you use on Power Director to trim it. And if you want to apply video effect, you can go to the effect room and select the effect, for example, like this uh, TV simulator, then edit. Then you'll be edited to, uh, you'll be added to this, this clip. And we also have a lot of uh, nicely used uh, editing tools, like uh, you can mute the sound of a clip by clicking the audio configuration. And you can adjust the speed by using this uh, speed tool. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm making it slower to a slow motion video like this. <clears throat> Pretty cool. And I can also do things like uh, rotate the video. If you're shooting the video in uh, a horizontal shot, you can rotate it by 90 degrees like this. <clears throat> or you can flip it uh, horizontally like this. And when everything is done, you want to export it, you can save the project. Or you can uh, choose to produce the video where you can share or produce in video file format or share on Facebook or YouTube. And you can also uh, select different output options like Full HD, HD, or SD at 480p. Okay, and another tool is to use a Cyberlink Cloud that if you are a existing partner to user, you can, <clears throat> you can apply a Cyberlink Cloud account then upload it to Cyberlink Cloud from your mobile device. And when you're going back home, you can download the file from the project file from uh, Cyberlink Cloud. Then you can continue editing with your desktop versions, Power Director. All right, that's pretty much is it. So a quick summary for today's course. So today we talk about the new Action Camera Center, which uh, group all the, the, the features you need for Action Camera footage, like the fix and enhance and speed effect and a motion tracker, which allows you to track a moving object in your video, and also the express project that you can use it to uh, quickly create professional looking video. And we are having uh, the 100 track multicam editing in this version, and having a newly version of True Velocity 5 with more enhancement on the uh, H.265 and high frame rate videos. So that's uh, pretty much is the update for a Power Director 14. So I hope you like uh, today's presentation and enjoy the product.